Okay. Hey everyone, welcome to the Drive-In Theater Talks.、Uh, this is my very first podcast that I'm hosting here. Now, this podcast features a very special guest who is a cinema lover and a film enthusiast. He has a wide array of knowledge and insight on the best and the worst of Hollywood, from the '60s all the way to the 2000s. And I specifically wanted to invite. Vlad, because of the level of insight he has on how Hollywood has evolved and changed over time. Last but not least, let's go on a drive into the inland roads of our imagination until we cross and immerse ourselves into the unexplored crevices of our minds. I call this the route royale that I will walk with Vlad today, where we will find ourselves discussing the great literary and cinematic monuments created in our turbulent times. Welcome, Vlad. How are you today? Hello there. It's fine. Nice to hear you. So I'll just start off with this. So one of the biggest inspirations behind,、um, you know, I would say for me in cinema is The Godfather,、uh, and we know the Godfather trilogy made by Francis Ford Coppola was a big part of, you know, just I guess Hollywood just making a big wave around the world.、Um, can you tell what what are your thoughts on、uh, The Godfather? I want to start with that. Uh, I think you'll be unpleasantly surprised. I have to tell you that it's not my favorite film by Francis Ford Coppola.、Mm-hmm. In my opinion, as good as、uh, The Godfather is, because it is a great movie, great characters, great acting performances, especially by Brando. Yeah. My favorite Coppola film is another one with Marlon Brando, Apocalypse Now. To me, Brando had an even better part there. An even better performance, but probably most people have no idea that I will not say it's a fluke that it happened like that because you have Brando, one of the greatest actors ever. But Brando came on set overweight, and he was supposed to be some badass soldier. So that was a big disappointment with Capola.、Hmm. But Brando, being the actor he is. He managed to squeeze out a truly outstanding performance, even better in my eyes than the Corleone Godfather.、Mm. It was a difficult process because I also seen footage of how it came to the performance. Brando did a lot of mistakes, but when he nailed it, it was more than perfect. Wow. Uh, I want to jump right into another question, and we'll get back to this Marlon Brando performance very quickly. What are your top three favorite movies from the '70s and '80s era of Hollywood? Oh my God, it's a, so difficult because that was the golden age of、uh, Hollywood.、Hmm. I can at random say which are my favorite three, but I may be not saying they're the best ones because there were so many good.、Films. I can tell you which are my. Kind of favorite. One would be Blue Velvet by David、mm. Lynch、mm. from 1986.、Mm-hmm. Then maybe John Carpenter is the thing.、Mm. But you are now asking me to single out something. I think John Carpenter made、uh, quite a few good movies.、Mm. Maybe The Exorcist is from the 70s.、Mm. Maybe Soylent Green. Maybe Rollerball or Alien. Though technically that is a British movie, even though it's made by 20th Century Fox. Why was this the golden era of Hollywood? Because、uh, in the late 60s we had a shift、uh, in Hollywood. Before that we had、uh, the classic era, and then we had the new Hollywood, the director driven Hollywood.、Mm. But I would like to point out out one thing.、Uh, Hollywood. Was、uh, was made by people who loved films.、Mm. That's why the films until the sixties, you might find them maybe obsolete now or not. But those were films that had magic in them. Yeah. Then it shifted to directors like the Seth Coppola,、uh, Michael Cimino, William Friedkin, John Scorsese, Mills, Scorsese, of course.、Yeah. Just to say、uh, some of those names, and more or less that was、uh, going on more or less well until 1981, when Michael Cimino didn't repeat the success of The Deer Hunter, but he had a flop with、uh, Heaven's Gate. 
Mm. I actually can't believe that the movie was so maligned when it was first released because it's a masterpiece. I'm not saying it's as good as the Deer Hunter, but uh, we are quite there. Anyway, it brought down United Artists because uh, apparently Chimino was having excesses and he was uh, literally spending too much money on it. But the film failed at the box office. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the nail in the coffin because uh, also some films before were a bit floppy. They didn't do very well at the box office. And they think it was an excuse to reshape Hollywood a bit. But still, I would say uh, in the 80s, uh, films were still made by filmmakers, people mm -hmm. who love cinema. Yeah. I would say that since the 90s, yeah, around the half uh, 90s, we had a change that was probably made by people from marketing and accountants mm -hmm. getting there and having too much power. What did you think of Taxi Driver? It's a classic. Mm. It's a 70s classic one. You have to love it. It's gritty, not pleasant to watch at times. Mm -hmm. Difficult characters. It no, gave, uh, 70s gave some realism, some grit. Uh, I like that word, because you really got to experience New York at nighttime yes. when, you know, yeah. the red light district and how the politicians were so scummy and yeah. yeah. What did you think of De Niro in Taxi Driver? I think probably his best performance. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. My favorite film with De Niro would be Deer Hunter. Deer Hunter. Yes. Fascinating. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, did you watch the latest Joker? I actually did, and uh, I found it very nice that De Niro was finally playing again a proper role, worth of his name, because uh, I couldn't even bother watch films with De Niro since a while. I think he was playing too much for the money. Uh, yeah, but oh, he was uh, just doing movies the Joker, for the sake of just doing yeah, movies. just for yeah. the check, uh, picking up a check. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And I think playing the, more or less the same character of some cop or some criminal. Like, was not that was not the real De Niro it was a waste of his talent and I think in Joker he finally had proper role uh, you know some people were saying that the Joker was sort of an homage to that to Taxi Driver like we got some of those it could be back. yeah I think it could be and uh, to me the Joker seemed like another film about an outsider that uh, it was used the character of Joker just to put it in more, more appeal for the box office. Yeah. To me, it didn't seem about the Joker at all. It was uh, some random stranger outsider guy and his difficult life. And that's a good thing, right? Because we don't want yeah. to just be like, oh, here's a superhero movie. Like This is exactly. a psychological uh, exactly. study, I guess, like a character. Yes, it was. It was a character study and it worked perfectly well, even as the Joker is inside the movie. Um, I'm going to ask you a question about uh, how, what do you think of James Bond today compared to how it used to be? Oh man, you know, I was a kid when <laughs> I started watching it and I, the first ones I watched with uh, Roger Moore, but I was disappointed because I hoped the VHS brought would be some Connery movie, but in the end I liked the uh, Roger Moore more, maybe because he was a bit more lighthearted and maybe a bit even more womanizing than Sean Connery. You liked Roger Moore more than uh, Sean Connery? Yes, Connor. I actually did. I, actually oh. did. I, I didn't watch uh, the whole array of movies they made uh, like I used to watch it before, since at least 20 years. Sometimes I catch them, but I don't watch like I take everything and watch everything. What uh -huh. I would say that uh, I'm sad that maybe I didn't give uh, Timothy Dalton a chance. I watched only right. those films when I was a kid. Yeah. I actually liked The License to Kill back then, but mind it was 30 years ago that I watched the movie, so I don't remember well. But what did I notice with Pierce Brosnan? And uh, I want to, don't want to say anything bad about Pierce Brosnan. I don't think he was a bad Bond, but... I think the times were different and those films, uh, I think, were a bit shorter and somehow 
they always felt uh, they lacked an episode like mm-hmm. it was a bit too short for a good James Bond movie we didn't travel enough we didn't have enough uh, clashes and uh, the fun things that make Bond movies Craig was good yeah. I think he was he was actually a tough guy he was a different one Craig Craig and is it, my yeah, favorite he, worked. he really worked yeah what do you think of Casino Royale it was good it was a bit he gets i think a bit more blows than usual oh he took a lot was, that was traumatic yes. a lot of traumatic <laughs> yes, it, yes it was yeah. difficult the, the, the girl who, the girl who was killed before vesper yeah. too yeah and then m had specifically asked him to keep his emotions out of the game and then then he falls in love and it's really t- it was very cool like Uh, what do you see in the future of James Bond? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, maybe it's better to refrain from commenting too much. I don't well, I'll, I'll say this. Anybody. They freaking <laughs> killed him in no time to <laughs> die, man. That was... Come on, that, man. Like, that, I'm just going to say that was bullshit. I hated that. That was that was a shock and I would concur with you. It was after bullshit. Like, yeah. James Bond doesn't die. You James can Bond change doesn't him doesn't die. Yeah. Uh, he's not somebody who dies. You can change him, he can be played by another actor, you can delete the timeline or do anything you want, but you're not killing the main character. <laughs> okay, so... It's, it's just, it's, it's not James Bond either way. Um, man, that is interesting. So, so I guess, I guess you're not excited about the future of James Bond right now, huh? Mm, no. Yeah. And it saddens me in particular because they thought that The final movie was pretty good until the very end, which mm. was which was crap. <laughs> um, I, Pierce Brosnan was, was Irish American, yes. and we've seen a few, a lot of British actors, a lot of British actors. Yes. Um, who do you see playing James Bond next? I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared of the next Bond, whoever it's going to be, because I don't think it's going to be a proper James Bond. Okay. I guess we'll leave it at that. Because I know what you want to say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if it's a female James Bond, I'm sorry, guys. It's not for me. It's not James Bond. You know, it's not James Bond. Make it Let a James Bond. Eight, double O, yeah. nine, whatever you want. Yeah. Maybe they'll make better movies. It's quite possible, but it's just not James Bond. You can't make it, but okay. We even had already the 007 as a female in the final movie. <clears throat> oh my God. Okay. I'm going to segue into the world of science fiction, man, because we got to talk about Dune. Um, okay. <clears throat> Which Dune? Okay. Let's start with the new one. What did you think of Denis Villeneuve's Dune? <laughs> by Frank Herbert. First of all, okay, first of all, <clears throat> I would like to make a disclaimer that I don't really think the new Dune is a bad movie. Right. Uh, I don't think, it, I really don't think. It, and especially if we compare it to the, to the crap made today. But mm-hmm. it's an average movie at its best. Right. To me, Danny Villeneuve <clears throat> is capable of doing visual shots, but he lacks uh, the narrative skills and I think he's uh, overindulging himself. Mind you, I didn't see all of his movies, but I also seen some films that he mm-hmm. didn't make in English. So I know a bit about Denis Villeneuve. I didn't see Polytechnic. I seen The Incendiaries, which was also quite a good movie, but I think he had a really big problem with the timeline because he was dealing with the world war in Lebanon. Right. and the aftermath and the characters and i think he made the film which is emotional and it's all nice but i also think he messed uh, the time timelines a bit anyway uh, how i felt uh, during this the new year yeah uh bland i didn't think i had seen an epic sci-fi movie uh, the characters uh, some were quite miscast and i think those are actually quite good actors but they were miscast or at least uh, misdirected by him. Um, at times, I felt like I was watching a concept short movie for 
Dune or what would be a photo shoot concept for Dune look like. Oh my god! I felt they were in the end, in the beginning actually. I think they were in some hotel room playing how they would like Dune uh, to be. Yeah. Then. Uh, I have to say this. I have to sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Vlad. I have to say this, man. It's just when I saw um, the Dune by David Lynch, I only saw yes. the first half, and I understood almost everything that was going on. There is an emperor. There's the Harnikin. Yes. Harnikin. There's the okay. Artrades, House of Artrades, and I understood what was going on. Yeah. But with this movie. If you didn't read the book and you didn't know what was happening, like you'll be so lost. I absolutely. And I, I genuinely felt like. And here's my second complaint about the new Dune. And I, you're right, the cinematography is so good. I think it's one of the best, in my opinion. It's so beautiful to look at. The desert shots, the sandstorms, and all of that. The worms, the visual effects. We can all agree it's amazing. Um, but I will say this: the casting of Timothy, the main character, the son of the Duke of Atreides, who is supposed to be this he- hero, he kind of seemed a little bratty to me. Like he looks like he just doesn't want to be here or something. Was it? Is this me who felt that way? Like the guy is miscast or misdirected. Yeah, and this, he's a good actor. Yeah. I've seen him in another role that he was perfect. So he's, he's not a bad actor. And another thing I felt, but, yeah, exactly. It just felt like he was a bit bratty. Like he was like, "Ugh, you know, I have to do this now." And it's like, how am I supposed to be behind you if you're, you know, I'm supposed to be rooting for you? And I saw the the main actor in David Lynch's, and he seemed kind of there was a aspect of innocence to him. Like he wasn't sure what was happening, but he was also a little bit brave. But you could also see the fear, and uh, you know that scene where the the reverend mother is there and with the with the needle of the John Jabbar okay yeah 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 uh, that was much better in David Lynch's in my opinion because exactly. he, she describes she's like first you will feel an itching then a little uh, burn then it will start to sear your flesh and then she starts to describe all that but in this one it was just you just heard noises and it was like your son almost died it's like what no he didn't he was chilling something like that <laughs> and mind you did did they mix something or that scene reminded me of some Madonna video from years ago that was also shot in a bit of dark and Madonna was like a witch. I don't even remember which one it was. Right. I and hope we didn't mix nothing, but it felt like a video. It's, uh, it felt so wrong on many levels, the new York. You, you know what, man? So wrong. It, <clears throat> the, another thing I felt like, they just glossed over some of the really important parts of the story. And yeah. fear is a big part of the story. Fear is the mind killer and these really amazing quotes that Frank Herbert wrote. And also, when uh, when the Duke of Artrades, they land on Arrakis, or Arrakis, sorry. Um, this is sort of like a contract that was made by the Emperor who said, here you go, this is now yours. And it was sort of given to them as a poison chalice that, uh, yeah. you know what, they're not going to really last here anyway. And yeah. they're gaining too much power. And it was sort of like a, a trick by the Emperor. Yeah. Very fascinating story. But man, the way they told this thing, it just seems so convoluted and confusing. And then when they land in Arrakis, here's my point, is there's all these freemen, right? All the desert people. And they call him Lisan al Gaib, Lisan al Gaib, which in Arabic means uh, the, the, the tongue of the unseen. Um, the tongue, the un, the tongue of the unseen dimensions of reality. In the context of Islamic words, like there's like some Arabic influence here. Exactly. So, Frank Herbert is a genius. Like when it comes to prophetic uh, stories and stuff, so he's sort of like a prophet. That like, he is the tongue of the unseen. The mother explains to her son in the new Dune movie. She says, "They call you the voice of the outer world." I'm like. That doesn't that's new that's uh, the hollywood of today the politically correct the woke hollywood band uh, <laughs> doesn't know what he's actually doing why it's i mean doing. look uh, lisan al Gab is a really important arabic term you're like we're a world prophet like that's a big word and it's like they just glossed over these things why because they want beautiful shots of the 
sand and shit. And I'm sorry, I don't know, man. I just pissed me off. That you're no, you're right. You're absolutely right. David Lynch did a really good job in explaining the Duke, showing his heart and how much he cared about the the people who were、uh, sanding the spices, who were extracting the spicing and the spice extractors. And he showed that he had a heart, but in this one, it just felt like something was missing, man. I don't know. Something was missing, and you know something. People complained that the Lynch version version was confusing. No. You can、uh, say did, that the Lynch didn't have enough time for various reasons to make the movie longer and to explain all the story and put everything in one movie. Yeah, but they did the but, beginning explanation so well. They yes, exactly. They did, they, just, they did it. In the new movie, I knew what was happening because we watched、uh, David Lynch's version. If I didn't,、yeah. I wouldn't know anything, and I don't、yeah. want to use some more vulgar word. I and, uh, thank you so me, much for telling me to watch that. My friend, tell、you. me this: where is the spacing guild in the new film?、Mm. Where is the emperor? Where is Princess Yurula? Right. Where, Where are they? Where yeah. are they? Yeah. The spacing guild is a very important factor because、yeah. it says one simple thing: who is the in charge? Who is the boss? The、mm-hmm. emperor is not the boss. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The spacing guild is. Yes, that's the, the Reverend Mother. Yeah, yeah. The Bene Gesserit. They also have a lot of power.、Mm. They also pull so many strings. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The houses of the so-called Lancerad or whatever it's called, they are there,、mm-hmm. but there are more powers behind them.、Yeah. Somebody that could overrun them in an, in a blink of an eye. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think that was not even hinted at in the new version. Ah,、oh, man! Just in terms of just <clears throat> the way they showed this beautiful. The 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 clashing of the tribes and the worlds, and the power shifting here and there, like they just kind of missed a lot of it, in my opinion. And、uh, yeah, I don't know, my heart just broke a little bit because the da- David Lynch is a smart man. I've seen his interviews. Exactly. So intelligent, and he he may not have had the the technology at the time, but it was a brave thing to do to make this movie at that time. The, the visual effects aren't great. Let's be real. <laughs> David Lynch is fine, but yeah, that didn't matter to me. I, the, I understood okay, the goddamn、absolutely. story. Like the special effects should be in purpose of the story. It should serve not the story. Exactly. It, yeah, exactly. It shouldn't be other way around. So you can、uh, forgive him because some of those、yeah. special、And、effects might not totally, been totally that great. I have so much respect for David Lynch, and I want to ask this one question. Maybe I'm crazy.、Sure. I swear to God, I saw—I I thought I saw Sting in the. Yeah, that was Sting.、Yes. That was Sting. <laughs> he was in the movie. That was Sting. Yeah. That was so cool. I was like, "What's、yeah. he doing here?" Oh my god. Well, that was a time when、uh, people in Hollywood tried to make it more appealing to different audiences by maybe either cast a musician, like they did with、yeah. Sting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or maybe to have a rock band compose、uh, much of the score, like they did、yeah. here as well. Yeah, it was a different color.、Yeah. Man, thank you for just ah, it was so cool to see him. He was just smiling there. I was like, what is this、yeah. thing doing here? That's so cool. <laughs>、um, I want to ask you, what did you think、sure. of the new Blade Runner twenty forty twenty forty nine compared to Ridley Scott? Oh man, oh man. We have a good movie,、mm. also with the dubious ending, which I didn't particularly like. I would say it's a nicely visually driven movie, but eventually the old one is much better. Yeah, man. This oh, thank you for much better. It's going to going to be a classic. This new one is not going to be. The new one is is good, but. You know what I felt like the new one did? It did not really like, like, like if you're going to drive a knife into the in, the theme, the the real core of this, the the message of the movie, which is、uh, what is a what makes a soul? Like, do, do you have a soul? Like, what makes you who you are? Is it just you know your flesh or your machine? Um, that is the main. If 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 the movie doesn't revolve around this question. 
um, to me it's just like a miss it's like you know that's the whole point of it it's like do I have a soul do I have am I a person who but they did a lot of the things really well like the, the there's a question chamber that Ryan Gosling goes into and they're like ask him all kinds of questions do you know what it's like to be in love and do you they ask him all the computerized questions to test if he's still uh um uh, i forget the name they use for these machine people uh, uh the void comes what's that is it the void comes yeah it's uh, god it's they're, they're called variants or something i forget okay. uh but he's like you know what i just want to still they still test him and stuff and he's like okay you know you're still good to go you don't you don't have a soul and i again man i just felt like they missed the message it wasn't for me the visuals are unbelievably beautiful but yeah it's too much i i love the fact that he made sicario i love the fact that he made arrival and he made i think he made prisoners and enemy i'm not sure he made enemy yes the yeah prisoners i don't remember i didn't see that man he's a fantastic filmmaker arrival was one of my favorite movies uh but man lately when he's been given these big budgets i feel like he's just missing like that story the heart of the story i guess is that yeah uh, so. this is it Vlad we got to get into the heart of darkness no, um, okay. <laughs> I, I want to ask you two more questions this is really important what's your favorite Quentin Tarantino film Jackie Brown what wow yes Jackie Brown <laughs> okay okay why the maturity because I think he showed uh, a maturity mm. in that film maturity. we're still having the best dialogue ever he's the master of dialogues oh my god he rarely misses he misses sometimes he didn't make all of his films at yeah. the very same level but i think he's the master of the dialogue so and jackie brown is there maybe the pulp fiction is a better movie, but okay you said which was in my favorite i would single out for now jackie brown some, this is something that interesting that Tarantino does. There's like usually a three act structure, four act structure, yes. and he takes those four acts and he switches them around. Yes. And then you eventually find the conclusion of where it's going later. Yes. So, yes. what do you think of that style of storytelling? Do you think Nolan is someone who does that as well, like really well as Tarantino? Or, or? No, 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 no chance. He doesn't do it as well as that. Mm. What's your favorite? Far Nolan? from it. Mm -hmm. Batman Begins. Batman Begins. Or if we are not going to go into superhero territory, let's say The Prestige. Prestige. I've, I was fine you didn't say Inception. No, Inception is not for sure. Right, right. Because there was that one character in Inception who asked, who explained everything for us, <laughs> for the audience. I thought that was fun, but I want to go back to what you said. Um, Batman Begins, man. That's a good <laughs> choice, dude. Yes. Ah, that's a good choice. It's a good choice. Why? Why? Why that one? Why not the Dark Knight? Uh, I don't know. Maybe because Batman was scary in Batman Begins. He was. He was. Yeah, he was scary. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. It was like watching a horror movie mm -hmm. at times. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I like I that. I think it was just. It just appealed more to me. Mm -hmm. I liked uh, the Scarecrow in Batman. And because he was like a, he was a real like adversary. Yeah. Um, and he was smart and he was a, an attorney and, and he was able to, you know, like manipulate and uh, like he was able to gas people. And, and when, when people inhale the gas, their worst fear was visualized in front of them. That was a, that's cool. That is something. Oh my God. Um, March 4th. The new Batman is coming out with Matt Reeves and Robert Pattinson. What do you think? What is your, what are, what are you anticipating? How do you feel? It's I think go? it deserves a chance. Okay. I want to watch it. Okay. It could be good. Okay. I'm not going to say it's going to be better or not. We will have to see, but it's something to look forward to. Okay. Um, and why, why do you, are you familiar with Matt Reeves work? What do you think? Uh, not really, but the visuals of the trailer. Maybe it sounds superficial, but they look good. 
can you remind me what Matt Reeves uh, did? Because I watched too many movies and I tend to erase them more quickly than I used to before. I really don't for, I really don't remember them. I so I'll, them I'll be I'll be honest. <laughs> I am not a huge okay. Matt Reeves fan, but he's done a lot of TV and he's done a lot of he's done he's done uh da, 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 i'm just looking at his stuff he's done a lot of things oh okay planet of the apes is his biggest budget okay. thing um and he did cloverfield he did conviction and the a bunch of tv he's done a lot of tv ep- episodic stuff um and he is a, a new yorker he's from okay. he's from new york that's good yeah i like the cloverfield i mm-hmm. watched it then when it came out in the cinemas mm-hmm. it was really good mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i uh, might have seen that planet of the apes or i might have not i didn't watch all i i don't know yeah sometimes I... people should accuse me that i'm too old school and i grew up with the old ones which were not all of them were not that good but the first one was a classic right and you know, I'm not the biggest fan of Hollywood of today. Okay. I'm not saying that Hollywood uh, should be like this. I think it shouldn't be. It's, it has the potential to be still good. Mm-hmm. But I really think the films of today are of lower quality. <laughs> they have the budget, they have the money, they have the talent, but mm. they just don't make it work. Um, what do you think of the casting of Now this is obviously probably an, too early of a question but Paul Dano is playing the Riddler. Uh Paul Dano, man. He he was in <laughs> 12 Years a Slave. He did a bunch of stuff with um I think There Will Be Blood is one of his most famous work. Colin Farrell is oh. playing the Penguin. Colin Farrell is good. Paul Dano, I think I watched him maybe only in There Will Be Blood back mm-hmm. in the cinema mm-hmm. when it came out. Mhm. I I have to say that the last decade of Hollywood alienated me from it. Mm. I don't know many of the new actors. I don't know who these guys are, who the yeah. filmmakers are, or if I see them, I forget them. They are not. Yeah. They just don't have the character the old guys had, like Daniel Day Lewis and Marlon Brando. And uh, I wouldn't put them in the same category. I think Marlon Brando is. Wow. Really? Thank God for Daniel Day-Lewis. Wow. wow. I think Daniel Day-Lewis as good as he is, I think uh, he's also just a bit overrated. Just a bit. <laughs> did you watch Gangs in New York? What did you No, think? I didn't. No, I didn't. Apparently that was his extreme probably, he's, a, he's probably a very sinister was. person in that role. Uh, he was sinister also in the real blood. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay, I want to ask you uh one of my favorite sure. directors is um uh, the director of The Social Network and Fight Club. Oh, what, David Fincher. What do you think of David Fincher? I want to close off with this because he's an unreal. He's to me he is I would agree subtle. with you. What's that? I would I would agree with you. Mm. I even like his sailing mm. the third installment. Maybe it was butchered, maybe he he's not so keen on it. But I still think uh, that movie captured the essence of Alien, what Alien movies should be like. Mm. I think it's superior to all the other installments. The first Alien was the best one. Mm-hmm. Why? This one. Wait, is it, is the it first... because directors are hungrier when they start off? Is that it? I think, yes, probably. But Ridley Scott had a great visual style. Oh, yeah. He had the great cast. Mm-hmm. He edited the movie so well. He had great music. Uh, he managed to make a fantastic atmosphere and the big tension. Slow burning. How they go through those corridors and to find the space jockey yeah. and everything else. And we even had a really good female character. Like mm-hmm. A really good uh, female action character. Because she's still a woman. She's not transforming into a Rambo or right. some uh, guy with a commando or tough guy. No, we still have the real woman. 
Mm. Wow. Okay. This is this is really interesting. Um, yeah. I... More about Fincher. We didn't say that Seven is fantastic. The game was also very good. Uh, even his version of uh, the Swedish. Uh, oh my God. What was the Swedish? The girl with. You know what I mean. I don't remember. Oh, but yes. I can look at, the, I... the film that he did after the social network. Ah. The girl with the dragon tattoo. I think. Yes, the girl with the dragon yes. tattoo. Yes. That one was good. Mm -hmm. He was. Well, most of his uh, movies are quite good. He's he's uh one of my favorite movies is definitely Social Network because he was able to show that not everyone in the character space all the main characters there was no good or bad guy they were just different circumstances they're imperfect people they all made their choices knowing what they did and there's eduardo there's mark zuckerberg and then there's the the winklevoss twins and then there's um sean parker the guy behind napster all of them did what they did and they made they did what they did and i like yeah. that david fincher showed everyone's good and bad side i guess yeah um you know but um i think he is the king of subtlety you almost leave the theater feeling almost like ambiguous it's like wow i don't know what to make of that um you could say so i guess I, that's just me you know mm -hmm. um but at the same time i i like the whole tagline you don't get 500 million friends without making a few enemies absolutely <laughs> but hey uh vlad i want to i want to thank you for joining me on this podcast i will close off you're very now. welcome but next podcast i i we still have to talk about james cameron more about ridley scott we and, should. and we and i want to talk to you about um um get out of uh, well, up and coming directors like um the director of creed which is like the legacy of rocky okay okay are you a fan of rocky mind you of the original one yes of the first one uh just the first one yeah <laughs> wait i watched all of them but i think the the real one was the first one all so you're definitely a stallone fan i am but <laughs> we can speak a bit about Stallone, about his early career. Yeah, man. I mean, when I saw the first Rambo, I saw somebody who is so hungry, just like a, just so tenacious. Yeah. Um, but hey, uh, Vlad, thank you for joining me. We will talk about James Cameron. We will talk about Ridley Scott. We will talk about- Looking forward to that. Jordan Peele as well. One of my favorite horror movie directors. Uh, we have to talk about Get Out, and we have to talk about his new movie coming out, which will go unnamed for now. But hey, Vlad, thank you so much for joining me on this podcast, the very first podcast. You are such an amazing guest and such a great friend. I love you so much. Thank you for coming, man. It was a real pleasure. Yeah. And Let's... until the next time. Until next time, my man. Bye. Take care, everyone. Thank you for listening in. Uh, we will see you next time. Take care. Bye.